the seven seals of Revelation. The number seven is found in 30, or rather 30 times throughout the verses of the Revelation. The first seal opened on December 20th, 2006. Quoting, and I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering, and to conquer. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. One seal per year until December the 20th, 2013. Revelation 20 verse 3, And cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled, and after that he must be loosed a little season. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them, and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded, for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Why? Well, the number seven is built into creation, seven continents, seven seas, seven hills of Rome, seven mountains of Antarctica, in the Revelation, there are seven churches, seven spirits, seven golden candlesticks, seven stars, seven lamps of fire, seven seals, seven trumpets, seven vials, seven horns, seven eyes, seven angels, seven trumpets, seven thunders, seven thousand, seven heads, seven crowns, seven plagues, seven golden vials, and seven last plagues. Then, of course, there were seven planets and a dwarf star, Verified by our disciples who have been watching with telescopes as they approach the earth, growing larger each day. All of our information is only for our saints, who have followed us in our final stages of appealing to and being denied by all churches worldwide. The last was the garbage Coptic people known as the Zabalim. October the 31st, 2013. What a suitable date that was, Halloween, and certainly it was for us. The Zabalim garbage city is beyond old Cairo. The church came into existence from 1974 onward. Then, as the people discovered Jesus and salvation when they die, quoting Paul out of every orifice, us making any impression on them that Jesus is already back and on a recognizance mission was hopeless. For me, a last ditch effort to satisfy myself, not one church is worth saving and all people are devoured by Paul and its puppeteers, the Jews. We took a drive through the garbage piles, stacked up literally to the ceilings of homes, children sorting in the hope of finding something to sell. No water, no sewage, no health care. Mothers are encouraged to have more babies to add to the family business. 2009, the H1N1 manufactured Jewish virus that failed to kill millions with vaccinations worldwide influenced the Egyptian government to kill off all of the pigs. The pigs were a crucial part of the garbage economy, eating the organic waste. 300,000 were culled, a vital saleable product that could have been replaced with goats. But no, since the Coptic church, inventing many miracles along the way, burst onto the scene, a Jesus cult emerged. The next series of pictures show the filth these poor, deluded souls have to live in, conditions no European city would tolerate. 
However, the light in their lives is provided by the Billy Graham attraction just up the road. The garbage divides like the Red Sea of Moses as the masses, donations in hand, pour into the fresh spotless church, leaving their garbage-filled homes a few hundred metres behind them. Pilgrims from the west join the wretches along filth-covered streets through a small suburb named after Ariel Sharon, which leads to the gates of the church. The people, free of demons, cast out by their love of the imaginary Jesus waiting in heaven. The demons, freed from the slaughtered 300,000 pigs, enjoy the corpses of the unholy men, sitting in splendour within the confines of the unholy grounds of Lucifer, obeying the spirit of Baphomet, which always seeks to be adored while awaiting the next round of worship and cash donations. <laughs> man on the right is the original Simon, a man who plucked out his right eye after reading the scriptures, absolutely insane, all is a parable. And there is the dude over the head of the Coptic church, 18 million souls held captive by this one man's beliefs. Break down the word beliefs and you have be the lie. And then in the middle, of course, you have the image of the beast, the dude sitting in the heavenly realm. Everybody's praying to. <laughs> so when he fronts up, in the flesh, of course, he is rejected. All part of the DVD. Hell. Oh, here we go. Approaching the gates. Garbage stacked high, either side. I have to say, though, that in the scheme of things, the Zabaline Garbage City is... Uh, well organised with their garbage, of course they are the garbage sorters. They've actually won prizes for their recycling. 80% of it gets recycled. Versus the streets of Cairo, which are just littered with junk and garbage where it's tossed anywhere and left to rot. So here we have it. Garbage city, the entrance, the gates. Look at this. The parting of the Red Sea into the cave church confines. Here it is. Ah, isn't it magnificent? Tourist buses parked in the parking lot. Ah, how proud they are of their church. This is what it looks like today. It all began from a grotto, just one metre high where Father Simon used to go and pray. And now look at it today. We had a small car winding our way through narrow streets. People everywhere covered in filth. What is to be admired is the driving skill of the tourist bus drivers who managed to weave them through the hellhole to emerge into the pristine grounds of the Church of Satan. Finally, we spoke to a man, Ad Hum. <laughs> He's the personal secretary of the head man, Father Simon. He took his name after Simon the Tanner, responsible for the miracle, the moving of the mountain, November 27, 969 AD. We showed at home the apostolic letter from Benedict XVI, but as expected, 
his poor soul was more knowledgeable than the Pope and concluded we were possessed with devils. He phoned the church lead demon, Father Simon, to tell him why we were there. At home himself was screamed at by Father Simon. You can hear now the screaming that goes through a loud halo in the streets every few minutes. <laughs> every day. <laughs> So here we go, the lead demon, Father Simon. Adam tells him why we're there. Father Simon screams, this is the Jesus loving, loving demon, screams it at uh, Adam, or that's what Adam reported. He just screamed at me, he said. And so he hung up. <laughs> so then when we told him that the interview with him, we have it all on uh, video, as you know. That's what we always do. We told him the interview was to be uploaded to the YouTube. He, Adam, threatened he could phone the gate and have us detained by guards who would forcibly remove the camera images. As uh, Saeed pointed out, in the beginning he was all for the interview, the uh, uh, filming of our time with him, all eager for it. It's not like he's unused to having his face on YouTube, it's up there when he has to interpret Father Simon's uh, Arabic messages to the congregation. Adam's the one doing the interpretation in... Uh, and you can see his face up there on the YouTube anyway. So suddenly he changed his mind and wanted us to remove the film from the camera, the SD card. And of course we said we weren't going to do that. We upload everything. And here he is here at... Um, Actually, the first thing that uh, uh, Yah said to me, when, uh, when did you first think it was going to be hopeless? I mean, he already knew. He woke up knowing it would be hopeless. However, I always give people the benefit of the doubt. We went and sat into the office and served, served us tea. And then I got straight down to it. I actually said to him, Adam, there's no, no easy way to tell you this, but the man you're sitting beside is the return to Christ. Well, he didn't bat an eyelid. He just went on to talk about a book written by the now dead Pope Shenouda III on reincarnation. Ah, right then I knew it was hopeless. However, we continued, that's what we do. We're breathing a sigh of relief, aren't we? Mm. So, what does it all boil down to? We have been to the pyramid, fulfilled Yah's prophecy, the precise details, why, only known to both of us. We saw the disgrace that it is, far from being adequately maintained and protected, the passage is ravaged by moisture from tourists, painting their way into the ascending passage. The Grand Gallery, Antechamber and King's Chamber. Inside the King's Chamber, a jackhammer was used to chip out the southern air shaft, the idea to insert an exhaust fan that resulted in a two-metre square chunk of Aswan granite break away and fall off the wall. And then you've got the 19 pure white alabaster stones that remained of the 144,000 have been further reduced by uh, Hawass to 14 for some undetermined reason. Leaving Egyptians in charge of antiquities is beyond stupid. This is the mentality the world endures. The filth of garbage in the streets of Cairo as a whole sickens all tourists. 99% of the number of tourists no longer travelling to Europe. This is all since 1992. The Zionist staged shooting of 58 foreigners was designed to destroy tourism in this nation. Now pumping out staged bias propaganda has further devastated the economy and once again tightens the Mossad stranglehold via a few machine guns fired into the air, maintains the fear factor peddled out through the Zionist media. For my part, coming to the earth as a thief in the night has been to gather evidence in order to confirm my inevitable judgment, which my angels are about to carry out, the wheat and tares prophecy. The next stage is what the demons fear most of all, the approach of the dwarf sun and its seven planets, the dwelling place of billions of angels. The number seven has been intrinsic to our Egyptian expedition. 
the small apartment we rented for a month near the Great Pyramid in Giza reveals how the angels organise all things for us. Nearby the relentless raving of Muslims brainwashing, the prayers of masses five times a day echo through the entire area on loudspeakers. Or walking into a restaurant, men will be on their prayer rugs, bowing to Mecca, living out the Jewish-inspired Quran. In the Quran, Jesus was not the soul of Allah, but letters of Muhammad say he was. In the Quran, Jesus did not die on the cross. Muhammad said he did. In the Quran, Jesus did not resurrect from the dead. However, Muhammad said he did. In the Quran, Jesus was simply a prophet. However, Muhammad said he was God in the flesh, the soul of Allah. When talking to Muslims, I said how similar to the viewpoint, this is the Quran, is of the Jews, and then reveal what Muhammad said in the only written record still intact. St. Catherine's Monastery, all the letters to the various kings of far away as Ethiopia, all other Old Testament prophets' writings are copies of copies and cannot be certain they have escaped the Jewish scribe. Certainly the Quran is a demonic work with snippets of lures in the same way are the Bibles of the devil. So let's do some numbers. The devil has no power over. Enter Google Earth. On three occasions, my YouTube video is no longer on the internet. The Jews altered the distances. As you know, they alter the database of Google Earth. Measuring from the cave, Mary, her child, and Joseph escaped to in Egypt, 2 BC. The Google Earth measure to where I was raised at 114 O'Reardon Street, Mascot, Sydney, Australia, they add 10 nautical miles. I use Magellan software that is accurate to within metres. I have, in fact, seven programs, North America, Europe, Australia, and so on, each specific to the area, but each can be cross-referenced to Garmin GPS or handheld equipment. Joseph was told in the dream to flee to Egypt, having been warned in a dream of Herod's intention to murder all the babies in Bethlehem. The family settled in a small cave in what is known today as Old Cairo City. Its precise location, 30 degrees, 0.226 by east, 31, 14.385. Measuring from there to where I grew up at 114 O'Ridden Street, Mascot in Sydney, is 7777.7 nautical miles. The latitude and longitude of the address in Sydney, 33 degrees south, 55.291, by east, 151.11.522. Now to our present home in Tugum, Queensland, the latitude and longitude being 25.14859, south by east, 15240.421, the 2514 means purification in Greek, and 1524 is to enter into. However, it measures 7706 nautical miles from the cave in Egypt. This is back to Tugum, which is also the same distance to the solar eclipse, January the 25th, 1944. It 888.8 8, 8, 8 miles to where I was reborn. By coincidence, I think not. The Church of Baby Jesus in the cave in Cairo to Tugama home today measures 7706 nautical miles. 7706 means Almighty God, and 7777.7 7, 7, 7 is the sacred number. Reading from Ezekiel 10, 5, and the sound of the cherubim's wings was heard even to the outer court as the voice of the Almighty God when he speaketh. Almighty, 7706, from 7703, the Almighty. The Hebrew cordon, cordon's number for Ezekiel is 3168. 
and in Greek, Gerematria 3168 is Lord Jesus Christ, added all together. You're familiar with these numbers, since we are speaking only to the few saints out there who have found the Christ in the last seven years. Ezekiel 2424, there is your Christ number again, your Jesus number rather, the number of its listing in the Greek concordance, 2424. Quoting, thus Ezekiel is unto you a sign, according to all that ye he hath done shall ye do, and when this cometh, ye shall know that I am the Lord God. Ezekiel, Hebrew Dictionary 3168, from 2388 and 410, God will strengthen One oh five. This number is where I was reborn. One oh five Rothschild Avenue in Sydney. The name of Lucifer itself. And then Ezekiel two four two four is Jesus in the Greek concordance. Add to this when you see this. Thus Ezekiel is unto you a sign, according to all that he hath done, shall ye do. And when this cometh ye shall know that I am the Lord God. I am pointing this out, like I just said, only to my disciples to get it. So out of seven billion souls, only a few have found me in seven years. My first YouTube upload was December the 20th, 2006, seven years ago, come December the 20th, 2013. Now from this apartment in Giza to the Coptic Church of Satan, is 7.777 nautical miles. From Satan's church to where I was reborn is 7777 nautical miles. From the church of Satan to our home in Tugum, Queensland is also 7706 nautical miles. But it's 7777 nautical miles to where I was reborn at 105 Rothschild Avenue. Why the number seven? Revelation. In fact, the seven planets are so close, many report seeing them in small telescopes. Our two disciples off the east coast of the USA are free from chemtrail cover. Not only can they see Nibiru, but always, also, it's planets circling counterclockwise, coming straight towards the Earth, best seen after sunset. Looking to the right, you can see, rather like a rock, doesn't it? A huge asteroid with a spear shape. So why is the number seven preordained over and over in distances, 7.777 nautical miles from where we are recording this to the Church of Satan and then from the Church of Satan, 7.777 nautical miles from Egypt to Australia and my rebirth location. It must be a sign, my rebirth latitude and longitude. What is it? 33, 55, 0, 6, 9. And east, 151, 12.244. 3355 is Yoktan. This offspring leads to 1 Chronicles 5.13 and the genetics of my offspring, wives and stepchildren, as well as the pyramid, antechamber, king's chamber, and on and on. The longitude, east, 151, 12244. 1511 Hebrew, I exist, meaning God exists. The number 515112 as days is 41.37 years, 4137, to make replete, literally, verify or coincide with the prediction, etc. Accomplish, after, be complete and expire, fill up, fulfill, be, make, fulfill, come, fully preach, perfect, supply. Greek 4137 to make, replete, etc. 
We see 4137 is found in 378. To complete, to accomplish by coincidence, or God will prove by coincidence, a young Muslim man, just 27 years old, we met in his father's shop after our camel ride around the pyramids on our first day. As of last week, which was October 23rd, we moved into an apartment above the shop, and the young man offered to drive us to the Abu Saga church, the cave where I and my mother and Joseph first arrived in Egypt. The latitude and longitude of it, 30 degrees, 0.226 seconds by east, 31-14-385. This young man's name is Saeed Osman El Komati. Saeed, while in the area of the Coptic Museum nearby the cave, he sat with us while we rested. I began to fill in details of the Coptic, the pyramid, and rejection prophecy. Saeed is a Sunni Muslim. I pointed out the only truth is the handwritten letter of Muhammad and replies between Muhammad and the king of Ethiopia as well as other kings he had written to. Mohammed made it clear the Virgin Mary gave birth to God, as Jesse Maria was the soul of Allah as opposed to mankind, of Adam. He was made by the right hand of Allah. Clearly saying what I said in the Gospels, the Father and I are one, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. You'll notice Saeed is in days 15110, which between us, which is 41.37 years, my longitude number, 151.10. Reiterating the Greek 4137 to make replete, accomplish. Leading to complete, 378, accomplished by coincidence. Cave Church of Baby Jesus, the second home after the manger in Bethlehem. The distance to my second home in Australia where I lived from the age I was 942 days old is the Jesus verse total, 942 verses in the 1611 KJV. Cave to the address, a distance of 7777.7 nautical miles. The longitude being 151.10 east of the O'Regan Street address. Tugum, 7706 nautical miles, means Almighty God. But from the O'Regan Street address to my first wife family home is 112.22 kilometres and is Psalms 118, verse 22. The stone which the builders refused is become the stone, the headstone of the pyramid. This woman was Satan's best shot. No normal young man would marry a demonized harlot such as she was, and is today pure evil and an expert at convincing all around her she is a saint. The area of the property is 31101 square feet. the area of the property where she lives. So we see then how it is all laid out in my dream state so that the cross is a mere few hours. Hanging on the cross, beat up and brutalised is nothing to this life. Each drop of blood represents a day in this life highlighted by the scourge of the excruciating suffering over 69 years. If you can comprehend that, then this is why I must measure and sort out and follow angelic prompts to recall the grand plan of crucifixion and finally reach the point where the seven seals were to be broken. The first was December 20th, 2006 when I was able, for the first time, upload my first teaching video. The following drawings I made in 1993 while in Canada. I had married a second demon in Pauline, 
Margaret Lucas, a paranoid schizophrenic. She slipped into a satanic state in private and a saint in social situations. Odd as she was, a perfect Geiger counter, a perfect negative Geiger counter, very effective when she could be used to point the wrong way and so I could observe Satan at work in her, a very stupid entity. So believe it, Satan is a real demonic man-made force. So even under great stress, I could focus. She would suddenly emerge from the bedroom, rush up and slap my face with all her might. Yet without reaction, I remained focused. Look at the details of the drawings. This is one of 20,000 similar drawings. Go from one drawing. I want to make it very clear to my disciples, you and I are all in hell. In my reality, the past life and cross, then the tomb is occurring at the same time, best explained as a dream, as death overcomes the body and your soul leaves. In the Hindi Vedas, Vedas means angels, messages. Past, present and future exists simultaneously. As such, I am able to traverse between realms. And so I must point out, as these are a dream of sorts where realms overlap, the resurrection on April 3rd, 33 AD is linked to my mother's immaculate conception within Daphne Go Lightning on the same date without my experiencing the 910 years between existences in the physical realm. Time then is slowed, stopped or reversed, depending on my dream, being the creator originating as a baby in a celestial womb. These things I show my disciples is not for the world as a whole, only you. Normally a person of righteousness may have a nightmare and in the dream state, weird and powerful demons can influence the mind. And then when awake, the Jesus thought brings you back to a state of righteousness. Righteousness. Yet you have experienced two very real experiences. After all, in daylight, the senses, eyes, ears, speech interact. But the subconscious is unaware of where the eyes open and closed realms separate. I elected to come back to the earth. I did not have to. I was tempted to pull the plug and start again. Prophecy had to be carried out, and so I am here, and time is up. The seven seals were opened one by one. The first, December 20, 2006, with the first upload of my teaching videos. And as profound as they were, the negative Geiger counter, the Jews, posing as trolls, made up the viewing audience. And therefore, a video that stirred them was an indicator. So I stirred very deep indeed. On November the 3rd, my grandfather, Alf Marshall, was born. 26,000 days later, I was reborn. That number is the procession of the equinox in years. On the same date in 2013, Tomorrow, there is a solar eclipse along the 25 degree latitude. Precise location is 25 degrees north by west, 55 degrees. The distance to my rebirth location is 10690 miles. It begins 10772 miles from my rebirth location and it ends at west, 55 degrees, 57 miles. Minutes. The number in the Greek concordance for Christ is 5547. The 10772 number is the diagonal of the Great Pyramid and 10.772 astronomical units was the distance 
to Saturn on October the 11th, 2013, when the Jews poisoned me and I had a heart attack. But as they cannot kill me, I struggled into the pyramid, up the passages, to the king's chamber, to fulfill what I had to do. Normally a person of righteousness, this is reiteration, may have a nightmare and in the dream state, weird and powerful demons can influence the mind. Then when awake, the Jesus thought brings you back to a state of righteousness. Ness. Ness. Righteousness. <laughs> Yet you have experienced two very real experiences moving along. My purpose, to awaken my elect and all the meek from the hell dream state of hopelessness. As the devil had already infested the dream state of the collective masses and via fear, religions began to overcome the meek. It is all demonic. The Jews are in power. The devil in man. Next slide, there are five planets lined up during the solar eclipse. Earth, Moon, Mercury, Sun and Saturn. The Moon distance, first contact, is 376500 kilometres. 3765 is to lay waste from 3697. The total is 113.53 astronomical units and is Greek, wife. We have the Lamb of God marries the wife, mankind. Revelation 19, 7. 197 being the number in English gematria for Brian Leonard Marshall. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honour to him for the marriage of the Lamb is come and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. Revelation 21, 9. And there came unto me one of the seven angels which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show ye thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, ascending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God, and her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. Yes, when we went to the Abu, Yah's just reminding me, Abu Sega, where we walked into the church that has been constructed above the cave where the baby, Mary and Joseph, were. There was an altar area where people were praying and there was a young mother there with a two-year-old child. And as Yah walked in, the mother slapped the child across the face and then the child ran to Yah's leg and held onto him around the knees for protection from its mother. Yeah. He said it was a sign. These are your Coptic Christians. After this upload, we'll get snippets of Adam, we wouldn't want to disappoint him. We said we'd send the link <laughs> of him on the phone with the lead demon in Father Simon. Here it is. Satan, pristine in the pit of hell. Yet not in the worship of all in hell. There he is, Adam. <laughs> I 
On November 11, 2011, the church made headline news around the world. I listened with great joy as the faithful chanted over and over for 10 full minutes, Yeshua, 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 Yeshua. During a 12-hour prayer vigil, praying for peace to come to Egypt and the neighbouring country. And then our breakthrough came when we <clears throat> began speaking with Pope Benedict XVI on March 10, 2013. That date came 485 days after November 11, 2011, when the Coptics kept chanting Yeshua. And this number is the height of the completed pyramid, the capstone in place. My task was to return to Egypt and enter <clears throat> my altar to myself on my mother's birthday, October 11, 2013. The distance in time, 700 days. Sacred number is 19.16. That should be 1.916 in years, not 19. My editing missed it. But it leads us to the Revelation 19.16. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So some of you may recall the bush vest we used in New Guinea. Um, through, I wore it more than <laughs> yeah, I did. But it disappeared from... Um, actually, it didn't disappear from a four-wheel drive while on the farm in Queensland. It disappeared from the farm. It was in, in our room. But we looked everywhere for it. First place being the four-wheel drive because we would use the four-wheel drive to go and check the cars. This is back in 2011 when Dex uh, came out while we were at the farm. Anyway, you'll remember that that vest disappeared for 10 days. I remember little Amber telling us, look up in the trees. She had a, a sweater of hers. We did. We looked everywhere. And that's also the time when Dex went to find the chicken. We were, you know, to check the, the feed bin for the chickens, which was empty. And he goes in to find a chicken inside the feed, empty feed bin with the lid on it and a brick on top of the feed bin. <laughs> Race is down to tell us. Anyway, so odd things were happening as they do, but that vest disappeared. And then, um, but it reappeared in the jeep. Yeah, I got into the jeep, drove down to the car to pick me up. It wasn't in the jeep when he first got in the car this morning, ten days later. It was only when I opened the door, got in, and the vest was... I couldn't get in because the vest was where my feet would be, under the seat. Sacked up like a pyramid. So that's uh, its 10-day... But there's a story behind it because it's actually disappeared again now on this trip. It's vanished. I haven't been able to find it since the day after we moved in here. Um, also, our tickets... This PowerPoint was started last week, but uh, our tickets... <laughs> um, vanished the day after we moved in oh, after we went to Abu Sega he drove us, we came home and he was up here listening to more listening to how this language of the mathematics all fits together what a wonderful man, young man Saeed, I, I was thinking about the trip to um, it was Saeed that drove us out through the garbage city we found Jacob Israel that's all we had to do we found Jacob Israel. What's the first thing that Sayyid began to read? It was all about Jacob. He is in Sayyid. We found him. That's what was revealed on our night. That's right. God will prove by coincidence. So Jacob Israel is in Sayyid. Not the demons in Israel, saying they are Israel. Got nothing to do with them. They are of their father, the devil. So what have we got here? Hmm. Bottom line is we've done what we came to do. Climb into the altar on the date preordained. Even though Yah was having a heart attack, he, I counted in the video, he 
went down ten times and it was carrying the cross, the road to Calvary, all over again. It is all symbolic. So we went to uh, treat Ahmed and his brother Owad. Uh, you remember Ahmed from uh, the first upload, our first day at the pyramid, Pamelona of Oscar. <laughs> He's uh, shaved Oscar's eyes to have pyramids, three pyramids over his eyes. <laughs> I've got a photograph of that somewhere. That's right, so yeah, we're, we're talking about that night when we went to Abu Sega, teaching Sayed, revealing he is Jacob Israel. Uh, I go to check on the tickets, I just think to make sure that they're where I know I put them. I don't find them first off, I pull everything out of the closet to, you know, all five items on the shelf, two shelves. Tickets are not there. I look everywhere else before I come out and announce to the boys the tickets are gone. And uh, so we do what we do, grab the camera, went back to video as we looked everywhere, got it on video, yeah, pulled out the clothes to nothing. Nothing there. We went through every cupboard, everything in this apartment that we had just moved into. Tickets were gone. So we say goodnight to Sayyid after assuring him it was the angels, not to worry. I said to Sayyid, don't say anything to anybody, don't worry them, it's the angels. <laughs> we went into Giza. That's the night we um, had pizza at the Pizza Hut, wasn't it, with Fergani? And then after that, uh, went to a backgammon game with his buddies at Gouda's. So when I got back home, the first thing I did is go into the closet because Fagani had actually said, ah, when you, by the time you get back home, they'll probably be there. And I uh, went straight to a shelf that we had pulled all the clothes out from, and the tickets were there, just uh, half exposed, obvious. They're in a white plastic folder, you can't miss them. So while we were out, the angels returned and set the ticket folder in plain sight. We re-watched the video we took of pulling everything out of the shelves and we're not there when we left. Okay, now the vest itself, which is still missing, it of course has a history, uh, it went missing those 10 days, but that led us to Mike and Mannon, who had already found us. They wrote in when we were telling them about the uh, missing vest and its appearance again, that their daughter, Emmanuel, who was only three months old, all of them were walking into a store or something like a Walmart or Kmart, when a man wearing that vest, looking just like Yah, walked up and asked to bless the baby, Emmanuel. And then 18 months later, Mike was at the computer wondering what to watch on the YouTube when Emmanuel sees a photo of one of the YouTubes with Yah in it and she points to it. And so Mike follows uh, what Emmanuel is pointing to and of course he finds God in the flesh, Brian and Galati Marshall. Emmanuel from Matthew 123, Behold a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. The name of Christ. 1694. So the final solar eclipse is tomorrow, no, November the 3rd, 2013. The drawing seen here reveals the sacred numbers from that first solar eclipse of January the 25th, 1944, revealing, announcing to the world, the sign in heavens that the Christ is here. And the last from 2012, November the 14th, 942 miles, Jesus and the Gematria and the verse numbers. Jesus Gematria, of course, being the 888 and 942, the verses in the King James where Jesus is mentioned. And here is Benedict's in Christum Credent. He's paid with his freedom, if you like, and others have been murdered over this. There's also a smear campaign going around. It was amusing when uh, 
somebody sent to us the Kevin Annette who was in Port Alberni all the years that the Christ was in Port Alberni. He's supposed to be a man of the cloth, is Kevin Annette. Christ is on front page news. He doesn't seek out to find out the truth. And then in 2010, he ignores the truth given to him by his personal secretary, who was delighted to find out that the Christ is back. Kevin Annette had our phone number, makes no contact. And yet, in all, he's been hailed as a hero, and I think he's up for a Nobel Peace Prize or, or something like that. And so suddenly, and his own words, suddenly an eyewitness comes forward from 1987. An eyewitness who was also a participant in the ritual sacrifice of uh, a small girl, and it continued many horrifying acts. So this was sent to us, we just laughed. This is all they can do is to now try to discredit Pope Benedict because Benedict has recognised the Christ. So for all of you out there who are getting on the bandwagon of Kevin Annette, he himself is Antichrist. The biblical Antichrist is, of course, Francis, whose term it is, capital letters, the cult of personality. Francis used that. So that tips the hand of the trolls behind the scenes who are watching everything that we do, anxiously waiting for video uploads of information that they send to us. Lucifer loves the adoration. Not at any time that Jesus wanted anyone to worship him. As they do in the multitudes. All giving their worship to the image of the beast or hearing and being influenced by the spirit of Baphomet, who craves the worship. Not Brian Leonard Golightly Marshall, who is the returned, reincarnated Lord Jesus Christ. As you know, he tells those who would worship him, <laughs> to take a hike rather than worship him. The controversy. All about rejection. He is rejected. So he has been. Isn't it marvellous? Have you not heard the stone that the builders rejected? has become the head of the pyramid. It is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in 